Hello everyone, my name is Ben Knudsen and I'm going to be showing you how to make the bongo cat lens. So let's get right into it. Ralphie, what are you doing? Come here. Come here. What are you doing? And this is Ralphie. Hi. Say hi, Ralph. Look. Say hi. Yeah, yeah, we're doing a presentation. Okay. Let's get this started. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. So we're going to need four images here. We're going to start with the up long. Uh, we're going to start with both hands up and then both hands down. And then with the right hand down and left hand down. So we're going to create a billboard for each of those. So we're going to go in here and call this one up. And then add that image to it. And set it to fill here so that it will scale properly. And then we're going to duplicate that. I'm going to call that one down. Yeah, right there. Add that one in there. And then... Duplicate it again, call it left, throw that in there, and then I'm going to call this one right, going to throw that one in there. All right, so now we have all of our images. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create the buttons for them. So we're going to go to the down sprite, we're going to add a mesh plane, and then you'll see that it's... Uh, rotated a little bit weird so just make sure to change this rotation to zero across all the sides and now it's pretty big so we're gonna need to scale that down a bunch here let's just do that and then maybe a little bit more precise so we're gonna we're gonna want it to go a little bit past the edges just so that we can make sure that it uh, is actually you know there's no dead spots on the screen so we're gonna make that go up to like the top third of there and we're gonna duplicate that put that in the left sprite and we're gonna move that down scale that a little bit more so that it fits correctly and then move it and we're gonna to want to get it just close enough so that it is touching but not overlapping that's good enough if it's overlapping and you just happen to touch both of them at the same time then it might not look right it might mess it up so you don't want them to touch and then that will go on the left half it doesn't need to be perfect but then this one will go on the right half again just get it as close as possible without touching yeah, good enough all right perfect so now we have all our buttons created then we're gonna need to create touch components for all of these and these bad boys can fit so many components in them so just throw a touch in there and since all of these are highlighted this will apply to all of them we're gonna make the orthographic camera the one that they're looking at and now for each individual one we have to choose that mesh that we want it to be touching so for the down one we're choosing that plane for the left one we're gonna choose that one and for the right one okay so now we have our buttons created so now we need to make the script that will detect the buttons tell us when the buttons are being pressed we're gonna call this one down we're gonna create a global variable so that it can talk to the other script that we will be creating so global dot down is going to be false initially and then what we're gonna need is to create a touch start event so let's go to the lens studio API search touch start event all you have to do is search that one word and the API will show it right here and all you have to do is go to the bottom find their example copy it and then paste it in your script it's just that easy they make it very easy and simple to learn so you just go in there and then once the button is touched once touchdown is true then we will do global dot down is true Oop, there and then we're gonna do the exact opposite for the touch event or touch end so basically when they stop touching the screen oops I did not search that right touch end event is that right that's right so touch end event just go in here copy that when they stop touching we're gonna make global dot down false again Okay, and then just to be sure that we are doing this correctly, I'm going to create a print function here and just have it tell us down, meaning just telling us in the logger here that I am pressing the right button. So I'm going to drop this script just right in, into the uh, sprite component that has the touch component on it. I'm going to try pressing that button, and if you see down here in the logger, it says down. So it is doing the right thing. So then we are going to duplicate that. I'm gonna rename everything in there so that it's the left button. Left, left, to the left. 
Okay, drop that in here. Do the same for the right. There we go. This is the most fun part of lens making, renaming stuff. Right, right, right. All right, let's do this. So now we have all the scripts added. So now left, right, down. It's telling us that the buttons are working. Perfect. Now we need to make one more script. We're going to call this one Bongo. I have no idea why I chose that. And then we're going to create an empty object here. We we'll call that Bongo as well. We're going to add that script to it. It's empty right now, but you'll see why in a sec. We're going to input all of the sprite visuals. So input component dot sprite visual. We'll call this one up. We'll copy that. This one is going to be down, left, and right. So once we apply this, we're going to see here it's going to ask us for those inputs. We've got to go up, then down, then left, then right. Okay, so now we can reference those in the script. So we're going to create the default position uh, when it starts, which is going to be the hands going up. So script dot up dot enabled equals true. And we're going to copy that. And we're going to do the same for all the other ones, except they're going to be false. OK, script dot down, script dot oh. There we go, left and right. So now once I hit apply, you'll see it's going to change to the default position because that's what happens when it is initialized. Then we're going to need uh, we're going to need to create a update event, and that will be called every single frame. So this is going to be what is searching for those uh, global variables. So I'm going to copy this amazing example from the API, paste it right in here. It's ready to go. Just going to take these out. Now we're going to need to have specific if statements to tell if those are being pressed. So the first one we're going to do is if global.down is true, then we're I'm just going to copy this one to make it easier. I'm put that in here. So if global.down is being pressed, or if down if the down button is being pressed, then that one's going to be true. Both of them are going to go down. That one's going to be false. Now I'm just going to copy this, put there and there. So then if global dot left, we're going to do the same. Make that one false. And global dot right, false and true. So what this will do is tell us if those buttons are being pressed, it's going to do that. But the problem here is that it doesn't go back to normal when the uh, when they're false. So we're going to need to make a specific if, if statement that will tell us if they are not being pressed. And that you just have to add the exclamation point. That means if it's false. So if global down is false and if, oops, if global down, yep, yeah, doing this all wrong. If global dot left is false and if global dot right is false, then the up one will be true. We'll go back to default. Oh man, there we go. And then all the other ones will be false. All right, so now we have a fully functioning bongo cat. Look at that, isn't that cute? All right, well, that concludes this presentation. Uh, bye. <laughs> God damn it. Well, that does it for this presentation. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Say bye, Ralph. <laughs>